His father was a Frenchman and his mother was a, a free black lady of, uh, uh, let me out Brian a little bit here, uh, uh, the West Indies. And he booked passage on a boat in the 1774 for America. He worked uh, his way to America. And he petitioned a military lodge for membership into the Masonic Order, and which it was granted to him. Okay. Uh, not to stop, you, uh, to stop you, just for a second, what I would like to know is, uh, what are some of um, uh, Prince Hall, I understand he was like an abolitionist. Yes. He um, uh -huh. was very much against many. He was against the, uh, he was for the rights of all black people. And uh, which he was uh, a minister and he taught uh, kids of uh, our black race of people to read and write and uh, regular Humi uh, humanitarian, I would say, mm -hmm. more or less, where if you're ever in the city of Boston, you might visit his grave. Okay, thank you. And uh, we also have Mr. Brian Abrams, who is the editor of the Prince Hall Masonic Journal. Yes, how are you? How are you? <laughs> well, I'm very happy to have you two gentlemen here, and um, I'd like to know uh, how long has the paper been in existence? <clears throat> the paper started in the early 70s, and uh, it has continued except for two years there when there was a problem when the editor was sick. And we publish it quarterly. And uh, we include in that uh, as much, uh, not only Masonic news, but uh, activities that we engage in because we are often asked about the secrecy, uh, secrecy of masonry, but one of the, uh, some of the biggest secrets in Prince Hall masonry are the things that we do in the, in the uh, areas of charity and scholarships. And I understand that you have a women's section and also a children's section. Yes, that's the Order of the Eastern Star is the women's section, and uh, we have two children's sections because we have one that's a youth group of the Order of Eastern Star, and we have one which we call junior craftsmen that are with the Masons. And I imagine there is a great, what you call camaraderie, and like you were saying that you um, help a charitable? Yes. Okay, and um, did you know Mayor, uh, Harold Washington personally? Yes, I keep I wanting did, to say I, mayor, I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I still feel he's my mayor. Of course, we miss him greatly. Before he ran for mayor when he was running for a uh, state representative, I worked for him when he's, I mean, he had offices on uh, 63rd and uh, Wentworth yes, in his um, campaign. I, I feel very fortunate because I had met uh, Harold Washington before he became mayor. Uh, Dr. Margaret Burroughs is a friend of his family, mm -hmm. and she was my high school art teacher, which I fortunately as an artist, uh, illustrated books for the DuSable Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, I had met Carol Washington any number of times. And of course, when his birthday came, I would send him a <coughs> greeting because I felt very strongly he was loved by many people. When he ran for office in 1983 for mayor, mm -hmm. I thought it was absolutely fantastic that Teachers for Washington, artists for Washington, uh, most many organizations, uh, lawyers for Washington, all came together to elect this fantastic, uh, I would say a giant of a man. Well, the, well one thing that uh, stood him well with the people is that when you check his record of voting and the things that he voted for, he was a people person. Yes. And uh, this stood him well with the community, and uh, he never uh, hesitated to speak up for the rights of all people. And uh, we can be proud of that because that is the same thing that Prince Hall did. Mm -hmm. The main thing is we focus on is that uh, you spoke of Prince Hall being an abolitionist. He was one of the first abolitionists. Mm -hmm. 
and he opened one of the first schools for colored children in his home. And he petitioned.